My name is Lekia, um, Lekia Lay. I am the founder of um, Projects Embrace. Um, Projects Embrace is a platform that um, celebrates um, the beauty of um, Afro textured hair and also challenges um, the narrow perceptions of what it means to be beautiful and what it means to be acceptable. And yeah, we just um, decolonizing the um, beauty standards basically. And I I decided to do this because um, I wanted my daughter to be confident in who she is and how she looks. Yeah. I didn't want her to, th uh, to think that um, she's not enough and that she has to conform to certain standards that are not that would not um, be beneficial or serving of her um, just because she wants to be accepted or she feels or she wants to, you know, feel like she's you know she looks good or she's beautiful I wanted her to be confident in her own beauty um and that's because I think it's important especially for a girl to know that they are she's enough or they're enough because when you feel that you when you know that you're enough you don't spend time trying to fix you know um something that you feel that is wrong Instead, you have enough time to fix what really is wrong, as in different ideas in society. You, you know, you can spend time in innovating and creating things, you know, instead of worrying about how you look and how people think about you and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't want her to feel that her looks will stop her from doing anything that she wants to do or going to any entering into any industry or going into any place that she wants to go to. Um, yeah, so um, before, before um, and one of the reasons why I feel very passionate about this is because um, before now, um, in my previous life, <laughs> seems like my previous life because it was very, um, quite a long time ago, I used to work as a broadcast journalist and um, being privy to the way that the story around Africa and Africanness um, is, or was, no, is actually, made me realize that the, ne the negative connotation around African and Africanness um, is really damaging. And um, I want, just wanted to do something to change that, to change um, the negative association that is normally, um, is normally linked to being African or, or Africa itself. And um, I didn't think I could do that working in the media in the capacity that I was working in. And that's why I yeah, set up Project Embrace because I just wanted to celebrate what we looked like and, and, in, and by extension, celebrate African. And what a fantastic job you're doing. Thank you for that. Um, thank, you. Our, <laughs> thank you. Our topic today, you know, um, with regards to the interview, is highlighting the challenges that our centered speakers face in the media industry. I mean, Likia, mm -hmm. you have a background in media. Can you throw some light into the challenges that our centered speakers come up against in the media industry, whether that be in broadcasting or presenting? What are the challenges that they face? Yeah, because um, when you speak with a certain accent, everybody has got an accent. Every single person on earth has got an accent. When you speak with an accent that, uh, or when you speak with a certain accent, depending on the accent, people view you differently. It's just, you know, it's the way that it is. So um, even back in the days in, in the UK, before you go on radio, you have to... Um, be um you have to be trained on speaking phonetically or speaking with what they call the queen's english at the time because that is what they felt was um worthy enough to you know to be on a platform like a radio or television I and mean, then things are changing now where we are looking at equality and looking at diversity and enjoying the fact that you know people speak in different ways doesn't mean that they're less intelligent doesn't mean that they um they are, uh, uh, or, or they're, they're, they're not equal or they're unworthy. Um, but it's still, we still have a way to go. 
So, you know, generally in this country, Northern accent is not seen as highly as a, a Southern accent, for example. And um, people, you know, who want to go into the broadcasting industry, you know, try, have tried to change their accent. So it's a challenge because if um, the powers that be or the gatekeepers say, look, this is the way that, um, you, you know, this is the kind of voice that we want to be heard because that kind of voice is the kind of voice that they see as the epitome of um, enlightenment, intelligence, even beauty. Um, it can be very challenging, you know, because how you speak or uh, the accent to which you speak is, you know, is down to where you were born, is down to the region where you were born. So, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we, I think, yes, it's, it, it can. It is a, a, a really big challenge that people, when you, the way you sound, people judge you from the way you sound. Um, and if you don't sound in a way that has been, that would be socialized to see as positive, um, then the barriers are even, should I say, higher in terms of trying to get into. A position where um, your voice will be heard. I don't know if that made that clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, very rich insights there and um, clarity of um, thoughts, if I may say. Um, but have you, on a personal level, experienced ascentism? You used to be um, a journalist and a content producer. Have you ever, in the course of your duty or in your role, experienced um, ascentism in the workplace? Yes, I have. Um, so born, I was born in the UK, moved back to Nigeria at, at the age of um, seven with my family. Um, so obviously, um, I didn't come back into the UK until about 20, in my 20s. So obviously, I was speaking with a Nigerian accent. I remember being teased at school because I was speaking with a British accent. Uh, but to be honest, I don't even know when that changed to my Nigerian accent. And so um, I worked in the media as a news um, as a news um, caster in Nigeria and so coming here I wanted to continue with that work um, but it's firstly it's it's like not no one really tells you no one will really say oh the way you speak is not really acceptable you know you just know um, because everything else you know says that and that can make it difficult when no one tells you that no we're not really giving you this because of your accent you know but for me it actually happened it actually got to a point where I was told so I went I, I've been work I had been working um freelance um in various um capacities so I also worked freelance BBC World Service and BBC London and also at the same time at a, a radio station that was called Capital, no, sorry, it was called Choice of Fame at the time until it was bought by um, Capital Radio. And um, so I had done work as a broadcast assistant and um, I, a position came for me um, for a permanent position. And I thought, well, I've been doing the work, so, you know, I'm sure I'll get this one. And they wanted, I think, three people. So I thought, ah, yes, I'm in for a chance. Anyway, we went through different stages and um, the last day, I think we we're about 15 people um, left and, um, you know, we're congratulated and said, you know, this about over 200 plus people applied for this application, you know, for this job. And we were down to the last 15 or 10, something around that kind of number. Um, and so we had to do um, example of a broadcast, um, even though we were not, we weren't going to be presenting all the time, but there will be times where we'll have to, um, we'll have to, you know, go on the mic and say one or two things, you know. So, uh, so anyway, um, trying to cut a long story short, um, I, uh, I did the the interview and um, I got a letter, I, I can't remember how long, maybe a week later or so, saying you did really well, but unfortunately you didn't get the position. But you can call this number if you want to know why. 
and you know if in case you want to improve so I called the number because I was devastated I was devastated um I cried but you know I had to wipe my tears and say okay let me see why so I, maybe I can learn from it and the person that I spoke to I remember her name was Kate and she said oh you know everything was fine everything was good it was just your accent I said what said you you know your accent you know the bit Nigerian accent I said but this is London you can understand me do you want to say that people wouldn't understand me on the radio and she was like oh no I didn't make that ex assessment because we had different assessor assessors and that wasn't her the her um should I say that wasn't the bit that she assessed of you know, left to her, she said, Leke, you could, you could do the job really well, but this is what they said. And that's why I didn't get the job because I had a Nigerian accent or they could, you, you know, you could hear my Nigerianness. And so that's a big challenge. And, and, and there are other times where I've gone for other interviews and you know, you do, you did really well, but you didn't get the job and you just wonder, you know, could it be that again as well? Um, and, and that's the really frustrating bit of it when you can't put your finger. So in a sense, I could say I was lucky that I, I was told and now, now I can retell the story. But if I didn't pick up the phone to call and, and wasn't told that, people would say, oh, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe you didn't do that well. You know, maybe there were other people better than you. But this is a, this is a truth that happens. And in a sense, thank goodness that um, I was told that. So, you know, that kind of like, Hmm. I think it, you know. It, I, I will agree with you, like yeah, it can be, it can be devastating, it can be frustrating, it yeah. can actually impact on your confidence as an individual, and oh, yeah. of people that have actually also experienced um, interview phobia just because of their accents, because they think that it's going to be taken into account, and just based on the way they sound, um, they are going to uh, be discredited and not be given the job. So it's a huge, huge, huge issue, which is why um, this project came to be, why it was initiated, to highlight the issues, um, and for the media industry now to actually look into this and find a way of fixing it. And based on that, you know, what do you think is the future of the media industry? I mean, in the context of regional and uh, uh, international accents, if you like, or foreign accents. Um, so what you mean is the, is the future? Yeah, what, what would the future look like for accented speakers, whether uh -huh. they be from the regional context or from, from, from the foreign context? You know what? If um, the media industry doesn't change its approach uh, in terms of you know accents and giving people um, opportunities with different accents, they would lose out. You know, if any media or organisation that is still sticking to the or having a specific kind of accent which is seen as more favourable than another, they will miss out because now we have um, platforms like YouTube and um, in. Um, not Instagram, sorry. Well, Instagram, yes, social media, really, yeah. and Netflix and all those places that you can watch programs from different parts of the world. And if you're watching programs from, or, or you know, from different parts of the world, you're going to hear different kinds of accents. You know, I mean, we we, we are used to you know watching American American um, programs here on on you know the regular broadcasters, and we're used to that. That's kind of like allowed in a sense you know but anything else is not really uh, you know given um, the same kind of opportunity but that's changing with with, yeah. with um with social media you know you have you know um, video streaming platforms where you can put your video and people can watch um and there's this um comedy uh this comedy from nigeria i'm trying to remember the name it's a little girl and um is it, not, you know is it um, get, mark angel mark angel comedy yes mark angel yeah. they get millions of you know hundreds of thousands of views yeah. and one day my niece um said you know in her in in school they were you know doing different accents and even the white girls who have watched emanuela and were trying yeah. to 
speak like Emanuela. So, you know, if, if, the, if the broadcasting houses or the broadcasting organizations don't realize this and see that, you know, now we are a, a truly global village. It's not like a global village where there's only one part of the globe dominating. No, that's, that's gone. If they, if, they, if they don't, you know, um, change their culture when it comes to accents, they will lose out. They will lose out. So I think that the future is actually quite bright, you know. Um, what, what has um, encouraged me also is um, my favourite, um, well, one of my favourite um, novelists, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, and I remember um, going for one of her book signings and she said, you know, she decided, look, this is me. I mean, you know, I'm a Nigerian and this is how I speak. And I'm not changing my accent for anybody. And whether she's interviewing Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton or whoever, she speaks with her Nigerian accent. She's not trying to change it so that you can understand, mm -hmm. you know. And any, people understand her. She speaks all over the world with her Nigerian accent. So things are really changing. Things are really changing. People can see that your accent doesn't determine your level of... Um, education that was such a backward way of thinking and it's really really changing so um yeah broadcasting um organizations really have to take note and and move on with the times if not they will lose out wow lucky thank you for your time today it's been a pleasure having you had the interview what a rich insight that you've provided thank you for coming i hope so, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> thank you <laughs> all right bye <laughs>